What's going on guys? My name is Hunter and welcome back to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Uh, we're going to continue the 3 star challenge on every cup in every CC. And we're starting back on 150 CC where we left off in the last one. And we're beginning with the bell cup. Uh, without further ado, let's just jump right to it. All right, we got Neo Bowser City, and um, this one is one of the hardest tracks in the game because it's wet. And that's kind of all I have to say about it, but. The road is a little bit slippery, and the turns are sharp, so uh, on 150, it shouldn't be that much of a big deal. When I get to 200cc, it's going to be a big deal. We yeah, got right here, things get slippery, kind of start sliding a little bit. Um, this was a pretty beloved track from the start, I think, because, um, I don't know, it was, it was just, it's just a well-made track. There's nothing kind of, there's nothing that stands out too much. It's just kind of a difficult, it's a challenging track. It was introduced in uh, Mario Kart 7 on the 3DS. As I get hit with a new shell, like usual. Excuse me, get the hell out of my way, please. Um, as I was saying, it was introduced on the 3DS for Mario Kart 7. And re added in, in Deluxe. Oh, yeah, I guess technically in Deluxe. And it's been a fan favorite, I feel like. Definitely a track that a lot of people enjoy on the higher level of, of Mario Kart racers. See, I had to break there a little bit just to keep my line. Please don't give me a coin. Yeah, you give me a coin. Um, the music's good in this. The uh, scenery's awesome. I really like the, the city vibe of this. I'm gonna give Neo Bowser City an 8 out of 10. Pretty good. Next we got Ribbon Road from Game Boy Advanced. From... Uh, having trouble remembering what the Mario Kart game was called. Was Game Boy Advanced? Oh, I don't remember. It would come to me. Anyway, so um, this is a, a pretty classic track at this point. It's, very old. Um, I don't have much to say about it. I mean, you're in a kid's bedroom setting. Pretty nice background um, on a little toy track. It's a pretty cool little track. It's not very long and it's not too difficult either, but there's some good turns on it. I just got a, a pink drift there, so. There's definitely some some nice turns on it. Um, music is alright. I was like hit with a blue shell again. Every race, I swear, I get hit with a blue shell. No matter what. And I fall off the track. I'm gonna lose. 
I'm the first in my but I'm gonna lose. Nah. Are you serious? Nah, you're you're getting that ritual. I like the uh, baby Mario poster in the background there. Right when you cross the finish line. It's a cool little thing to see. They definitely paid a lot of attention to detail in this game. I swear to God, the item placement in this game is just ridiculous. The coins that you are practically guaranteed to get in first make it so hard to do anything because that offers no protection for you. Combined with the OP AI item placement, and it's just ridiculous. Uh, anyways, um, I'm gonna give this one a 7 out of 10. Pretty good. Now, this one is a uh, new track for this game Super Bell Subway. Uh,. From what I remember, it's an okay track. Nothing crazy. Obviously, set in the subway. And they did a pretty good job with the setting. Like, it definitely reminds me of... Like a subway that you would see in real life. Um, the multiple paths through the subway is nice. Uh, it kind of gives you a toad turnpike or whatever the other one's called. Vibe. The highway courses. That's definitely what it reminds me of. The music is kind of just, it's very simple, uh, kind of just gives you the average, everyday life music. Oh boy, that's great. Had to avoid that banana, but couldn't avoid the banana without hitting the, the subway. We are way ahead. Apparently. Which means there's definitely a blue shell incoming eventually. Um, I don't have much else to say about this track. It's not a bad track. It's not a great track. It's not something I'm going to remember and I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't see it in the next Mario Kart. We're in any Mario Kart after this. Just because it's not standout-ish. It's nice in detail, and like, don't get me wrong, it's a good track, but... It's a well-made track, but it's nothing crazy. Um... I'm gonna give the subway a 6 out of 10. And now we're on the Big Blue, which is another new track to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Another F-Zero inspired track. And this was the track that I thought I was racing on before. And this is a segmented track where it's uh, you only go through everything once. It's not a a three lap race, so to, so to speak. Um... Big Blue is really fast. And that's the the gist of this track, honestly. Um, there's a lot of shortcuts on this track as well that I'm too bad to to know. But like around some of these sharp corners, you can jump like the rail and just like right here 
You could definitely jump that and just fly over it. Um, like I said, I'm not very... I'm not actually that good at this game. I'm good for a casual player, but... I'm not good compared to the people who actually play this game. This one goes by quick, though. We're already on the third segment of this race. And most of the third segment is just downhill racing. Um, a lot of people like this track. It's made for 200cc. Because... Uh, it's not, it doesn't have that many sharp turns. It's a very, uh, big, open track. And this is it. Um, but it is a segmented track, which I don't tend to like very much, so... I don't know, I'll give it a 7. Not terrible, but it's not my favorite track either. And there's no doubt in my mind that this was a three-star performance. Um, I didn't run into many issues at all, honestly. Other than a couple of blue shells, but that's expected at this point. And uh, I guess I'll show you some of this cutscene. Um, but that's the main 12 tracks of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Minus the DLC, but I mean, we're only halfway through. 150cc if you ask me um, but uh, if we're just basing this game off of the first 12 tracks it was a great game um, I mean it's lasted for what seven years now I think eight maybe I'm not exactly sure when this game came out but it's been out for a good while now. I mean, I guess this game lasted for more than that because the original Mario Kart 8 came out on the Wii U. So it might be coming up on 10 years now that this game has been out, but the deluxe version, about six or seven, I would say. And uh, yeah, really well made. This is probably the best Mario Kart ever. If you're counting track selection and um, just quality of the game itself, there's not many issues other than the item distribution, I would say. It kind of sucks, but other than that, um, the first 12 tracks were, were great. And I don't know how to skip this. Can I skip this? No? Okay. Um, I'm stuck here, so I guess we shall wait. I guess while we're here, um, I'll talk about some upcoming ideas for the channel. Uh, firstly, we already discussed this in a, a past Mario Kart video, but Mario Kart Online, definitely something I'm going to try out. Um, we'll see how that goes. But that's down the future. I might do that after I finish 150cc. Might throw in a little break with some online for a week or so. And then come back to Mirror Cup. Or, yeah, Mirror CC. And then um, we have Wii Sports going. I'm going to go pro in every uh, Wii Sport. So uh, check those videos out. I have two up now. I'm going to be recording two after this, actually. And then, after I go pro in all the Wii Sports, I'm probably going to do some platinum medal grinding in Wii Sports. Try and get the platinum medals in the training. Um, I'll explain that more when the video actually comes out, but that's down the future. And um, probably another Mario series. Either Super Mario Wonder or Super Mario Galaxy or Super Mario Odyssey. Uh, I might throw up a poll on the channel 
uh, within the weekend, maybe. See what people want to see. See if anyone actually replies. And, uh, maybe I'll pick whichever one wins that if enough people vote. If not, I'll just pick whichever one I'm feeling the most wanting to do. Um, other than that, I know I have to finish the climbing game. I know I have Minecraft that I gotta get back to, but I'm taking a little break from Minecraft for right now. Um, but I'll definitely come back to it eventually. Um, now that the credits are over. Uh, let's get right back into... 150cc. And we're gonna do... Still haven't unlocked anything interesting yet. I believe. Let's make sure. Yeah, I mean... There's really not anything interesting. I mean, if we're scrolling through all these... The standard cart with the rollers is still kind of better for me. Um, screw the, the Wario one. Let's look through these. Is there any that give me more acceleration than that? No. Is there any that give me less... Weight than that. I think this is my best option for, for right now still. So, three star to every base game cup. Now, we're on to the DLCs. And there is a lot of them. And, uh, our, uh I guess I'll do a little preview of some things that come up. I'll just scroll through some of these. Um, we have the Golden Dash Cup. Lucky Cat Cup. Turnip Cup. Uh, the Turnip Cup looks uh, pretty exciting. Propeller Cup. The Rock Cup. The Moon Cup. Then we go down to the Fruit Cup. We got the Boomerang Cup. The Feather Cup, the Cherry Cup, the Acorn Cup, and the Spiny Cup. Some of these look really exciting. I'm excited to do some of these. Others, meh. I'm excited for a, a lot of different tracks that I'm seeing that are spread out across this. But uh, we'll get to those when we get to them. Alright, so to start off the DLC, we got uh, Paris Promenade from Mario Kart Tour, which is the mobile Mario Kart game, which I've actually played a good bit of. It's not that bad. Um, the Tour Cups, or the Tour Courses, get weird, because they switch the, the way you're supposed to go. And I'm not very familiar with these tracks, which is why instead of doing one cup of video and doing every CC on that cup, I'm doing it one CC at a time because I need to learn these cup or these courses. I guess these cups in the DLC because I'm way more familiar with the original courses then excuse me and the ones on these cups so if I can familiarize myself I'm gonna stop before this because I don't want to fall in water or something get stuck Alright, so let's not get hit by the piranha this time. Baby Luigi is tearing me up right now. I'm just worried. Like, see, now you can't go to the, the left at all. Because it switches it up on you. I don't love the way they did this. 
this part especially, where if you lap them too much, I can't see again. I'm gonna get blue shell for a second time. But I guess it works out because I combined two hits into one there. Two bombs? Are you kidding me? What am I supposed to... This is what you're giving me for protection? Um, I haven't really talked about this course that much, but, um, it's almost over, so let me just hit on a few things. Based off Paris, obviously, um, the music, the whole scenery, definitely gives you Paris vibes, but does it really belong here? Not really. Um, and I'm not a huge fan of the way they did the tour courses, so I'm going to give it a 5 out of 10. All right, next up we got Toad Circuit from 3DS. And I actually remember this course. It might have been the first course in the game. I don't remember though. Probably not because it's usually Mario Circuit. But. Um, this one was actually a banger when Mario Kart 7 was out. I remember this might be, like I said, if this was the first track, I remember when it first lets you glide, which is right here on this track that on that ramp that comes out of the ground. Really baby Luigi. Okay bro. Yeah, get get off my get off my course. Stealing items for me. Alright. Um, Toad Circuit is a very basic course, obviously. And here is where I believe the first time we saw gliding in a Mario Kart game was. It was on that ramp that I just took right there. Um, it's a very good introductory course for the gliding. It's really simple. The gliding doesn't really affect anything at all, honestly, but it's there. Just basically to show you. What gliding is like. I'm pretty far ahead here. Um, the music is basic, you know, circuit course music. Um, it fits. It's a good circuit course. Not, you know, not the best circuit course ever, but a good course. Um, I'm just gonna give it a 6 out of 10. That's solid. Next up, we got Chaco Mountain. This is a very classic N64, Mario Kart 64 course that many people know and love. Um, it's got some history behind it, um, that other people will have covered on YouTube better than I could ever. Um, go to Summoning Salt's channel if you want to learn more about this specific course. Just look up Summoning Salt Chaco Mountain. Um, obviously, they took the, the shortcuts out of this course, unfortunately, for speedrunners, but it definitely gives you the old school N64 vibes. I think the music is what kind of ties it all together, because this definitely feels like old music because it's got like the harmonica it doesn't have the the jazzy feel that the newer ones the newer Mario Karts have it, it's more of a old school style of music which I'm not complaining about it's perfect for I mean, they, they kept the original music so um, and I believe they even kept the road uh, the signs the same? At least some of them. 
Um, nothing crazy. You can't really have a good scenery on this course because it's just on a mountain. I mean, you could have a mountain range in the background, but that kind of defeats... I don't know. This is a mountain. Singular, so... Um, of course there's the bats in the cave. I'm glad that hit me now instead of later. There's the bats in the caves, which is kind of a classic Mario Kart trope. Oh my goodness. And the falling rocks, which I believe were first introduced here. Um, this is a good recreation, though. For... For the current Mario Kart. Uh, I'll give it a 7 out of 10. Pretty good. And last, but certainly not least, Coconut Mall. And I'm going to be honest with you. Um, Coconut Mall was my favorite track ever uh, on the Wii. And I'm glad they brought it back, but I'm not happy about what they did to it. It's definitely not quite as good as the Wii version. I don't know exactly what it is. It's just been, um, it's been updated and I don't know if I like it. Like, they changed the escalator to just a, a ramp. The cars barely move now. And the other thing that was always cool about Coconut Mall was that your Miis were, were in the cars. So it was always cool to see, like, oh, the game can track your Miis into this, this game. It's kind of cool. Um, but it is Coconut Mall, and the music is fantastic. It always will be. It didn't change it a bit. It's still the same as it was before. Um, but Coconut Mall is not as good as it used to be. The cars just do the same little animations there. They don't go back and forth as much as they used to. So, um... Oh boy. Okay. Someone avoided that. Oh, it switched up on me. I like this this little room here. It gives an homage to the classics with the the old pixelated wall art. And I do believe they kind of made the the scenery a little more detailed in the mall itself. They added a they Marioed it. They Marioified it with some of the store signs. Um as much as I'd love to give Coconut Mall in this game a 10 out of 10, it's not the same. So, unfortunately, I have to give this a 9 out of 10. It's still one of my favorites, and the original will always be probably my favorite course ever, but it's not as good as it used to be. Alright, so that'll do it for the... whatever cup this was <laughs> three starred pretty easy what is this called the gold shine it's a gold mushroom cup let's be honest so one more cup for this episode and then we'll call it but uh, as you can see we're getting there 150 cc plus the the other CCs below it are over halfway done now. Okay. Um, I don't like this cup. I'm just going to say it now. I apologize for uh, the low ratings I'm about to give it, but I don't like this cup. Starting off with another tour cup. Excuse me. I keep saying cup instead of course. Another tour track uh, is Tokyo Blur. Um... 
as you can see, he's still following the theme of international popular places. This time we're in Tokyo. This one gets even more confusing than the first one did. Uh, because the, the split lanes get more split, if that makes any sense. I don't think it did, but you'll see what I mean when we get there. I'm really bad at the commentary right now, I apologize. I just woke up about an hour ago as I'm recording this. Um, so I'm a little, little, uh, days to be doing commentary on Mario Kart tracks right now. Um, Tokyo Blur doesn't really give me Tokyo vibes, to be honest with you. And I guess it's not supposed to, really. It's not a traditional Japanese track necessarily it's it's just a city course it's nothing it's not like a tribute to Japanese culture necessarily it's just a a tour of the city of Tokyo current and obviously they did it correctly because Nintendo is made in Japan so obviously they did it good and you can see I believe that's Mount Fuji in the back there um, so I can't knock it too much but I'm only giving it a 5 out of 10 I don't like the tour courses still they don't really fit into Mario Kart that well so in tour it makes sense but here not so much all right, next up we have the DS track Shroom Ridge, and I don't remember this track that much from the DS, but I do remember it from uh, this game specifically. It's definitely a windy course, for sure, and on 200, it's definitely tough. You have to break around that turn specifically. And probably this one as well, if I remember correctly. And some others. Um, cars, another kind of highway track. Um, do we need another one though? Not really. And this is where, you know, some of the DLC tracks are great. Because they deserve to be in the original game, but got snubbed. And people complained, so they were like, okay, we'll make a DLC and put all the tracks that people originally wanted in the DLC. Which is fine. But then, you have to fill the other half of the DLC with crappy tracks that don't deserve to be in the DLC. Just to fill a whole... 12 cups which was way too much to be honest with you I don't think 12 more cups on top of the 12 already in the game was the right option um, I haven't talked about this course enough while I was here I've just been kind of rambling about the game itself which I tend to do in these I feel like but um it's not bad I like the music definitely feels like Mario Kart to me I'm way ahead on this track by the way um definitely feels like Mario Kart to me and I think this is gonna be my favorite course in this cup and I'm probably only giving it a 6 out of 10 Unfortunately. Alright, next up we have uh, Sky Garden from Game Boy. And I still... 
can't remember what the Game Boy Mario Kart is called. I'll probably put it on the screen. Um, but for now, it's just a mystery. Super Circuit. I... I got it. Mario Kart Super Circuit, I believe, was the Game Boy Advance game. Oh my goodness. Why does that turn so hard? Is this track slippery? Um, anyway. I've played this before on the DS, I think. Or the 3DS. I think it was the DS that this came out on. I always liked the... The road. I like the brick road for some reason. It's very satisfying to drive on for me. The sound of it is still the same. It's got that, like, I don't know what, oh my god, I did it again. I don't know what that sound is, but, um, I don't know, I, I just like it. I distinctly remember liking this course for that on the DS. Um, the scenery is kind of cool. You know, it has the vines going up. It's obviously cloud themed, which is good and all, but um, the Koopas, the flying Koopas, definitely a good choice. They kind of just spammed them around the edges. I'm not sure if that was in the original or not. If it was, that's fine. Um, and the airship on the side as well. I'm gonna beat this blue shell, just barely. Um, I'm gonna give that one a 6 out of 10 as well. Not bad. Last and probably least in this cup for me, I hate this track, Ninja Hideaway. Uh, this track in 200cc gets me killed a lot. And it's very hard. Really? Well, just another reason to hate this track, I guess. Bad luck on it too. This track is hard. It's got sharp turns. It's very close quarters, and it's very confusing. And there's like, I don't know, I just don't like it. It's fine design-wise, I suppose, like, something wrong with the design of the course itself. But, um, it's, for some reason, I cannot do well on this track. Even on 150cc, I can't do it. I'm constantly having to break. It's too much. And I think... I don't know. I don't know what it is. Like I said, it's not designed bad. That's not what I don't like about it. I don't like... A lot of other things about it. I don't like the way it's spaced out. I don't like the way that the like it really w makes you trick off stuff, but you you don't have time to trick off stuff. Like, there's not enough room to do that. I might not get three stars just because of this this course. Like I'm in third. I'm in fourth. Somehow, like, I just I don't know. I don't have to do this whole course over again. Going on the bottom. Going on the top just doesn't seem to work for me. And that might be the secret. I don't know. Taking the bottom instead of the top. 
Uh, will I remember that? Probably not. Uh, I got first. Will it be enough? Probably not. But I got first. And I'm gonna be pissed if I get a two-star for this. But I also wouldn't be surprised. Okay, it gave me the three-star. Thank you. It was generous. On oh, Mario Kart Wii, I would not have gotten a three-star for that performance. I'm just gonna say it. Um, I didn't even give Tokyo... What was that called? Ninja Hideaway? A... A rating. But I'm giving it a two. I really don't like it. And... Uh, that's gonna do it for this episode. Uh, we did three more cups. We got three more cups to do in the next one. Let's see what I unlocked here. Bowser Kite, let's see if it's any better than. Uh, it's the same, but I like the Bowser Kite better, so. In the next one, we'll do the Turnip Cup, the Propeller Cup, and the Rock Cup. And maybe we'll throw in the Moon Cup too. We'll see how I'm feeling. And then that leaves us with six or seven more. I might save the four cups for the last video in the 150cc series. Um, but we'll see. That's going to do it for this one. Uh, thank you everybody so much for watching. If you liked the video, make sure you leave a like. Uh, comment down below. Uh, your thoughts on these courses that I ranked terribly or super high. Um, stay tuned for some of the stuff I was talking about at the beginning of this video. That'll be coming up soon. Subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you in the next one.